But I think this has been a great half race from the start. Uh, six candidates, a strong competition. And obviously, one can never know how many votes one's going to get. Uh, since it's, it's going to be a secret ballot. So, um, the, but the, the members have uh, taken their decision, so uh, I accepted it. And uh, life moves on. It, it was a very tough competition from the very start, six candidates. And uh, I believe that uh, the way to do it is to mount a very strong campaign, uh, put out a strong manifesto, spelling out my vision for the future of the IOC uh, and to meet as many members as possible, to attend as many events as possible and to discuss with the colleagues uh, my vision uh, for the future of the IOC. Uh, I think given the circumstances, the, the rules, uh, I will not uh, be able to add anything else uh, to the, the whole campaign. I was quite satisfied with, with the way it was conducted. Uh, what I think is Singapore actually has come a long way as well. Uh, we won the session, uh, uh, or the right to host a 2005 session, where London was elected for the 2012 Olympic Games. Uh, we won the right to host the inaugural Youth Olympic Games in 2010. And this year we just hosted the IOC Ethics Commission meeting and forum in July. So I think we have uh, been uh, making a strong headway. Uh, and into the IOC uh, Olympic events. Uh, so I believe that you know, sooner or later there will be uh, someone else from Singapore in the future that will be trying for the same position again. And, and I believe it's time that we should start to build the next generation of leadership uh, in Singapore, of uh, sports leadership. Singapore is a small country but uh, at the same time, I think Singapore is also well respected because they know that uh, we are honest, we fight uh, against corruption, we are efficient, uh, we're intelligent, we're hardworking, and we always deliver on our promises. So I do not think there's a huge disadvantage that I come from Singapore. Life gets back to normal very fast. I try to overcome my jet lag, 30 hours of fly, flying time, 12 hours of time difference. I really started going to my offices uh, and uh, I will still have another 16 years to serve as an IOC member. Uh, so I'll continue my work there, serving uh, under the new uh, president, uh, pressuring to IOC my fullest support. For Singapore, I want to continue to serve sport as well. I've received very kind messages from uh, President, from Prime Minister, from Deputy Prime Minister and the Sports Minister and, and many other political leadership uh, as well as friends, colleagues and uh, fellow Singaporeans as well. Uh, so I, I'm very committed to sports in Singapore and I do whatever I can for more sports. I believe that we can see uh, a strong emphasis on, on sports over the years. Uh, from sports council days uh, and towards the end of my term, uh, it, uh, uh, sports ministry was created by then Prime Minister Go Chok Tong and additional funding of 500 million was also given uh, and continuously I think you can see uh, more investment into sport, uh, different programs uh, uh, and now we have the new sports hub that's going to be completed next year. Uh, and I, I believe there will be uh, even more uh, funding and support to sports, and which I believe is very important, uh, not just to develop fitness uh, of Singaporeans, but also for community bonding and nation building as well. Sports is definitely now uh, deeply entrenched as uh, one of the national priority. Uh, so with the Sports Hub, with the 2015 SEA Games to be held, uh, with a host of other sporting events uh, that the Sports Council and the different national federations are bidding for. Uh, it definitely is going to be more important and uh, more vibrant. Uh, and, and I believe sports is such an important tool 
uh, for us uh, that I'm quite sure it will continue to be so.